Hello everyone and welcome to AD Shirts Cleanings. I am Dr. Gunjan Desai and today we are going to complete our series on the applied anatomy of pancreas. We have gone through the anatomy, the embryology, imaging based segmentation as well as blood supply in a very detailed discussion. And in this part we are going to discuss the lymphatic drainage and the nerve supply. So when we come to lymphatic drainage of pancreas, as you will all know, previously in the AJCC staging, the N1 and N2 would help us in remembering the different nodes around the pancreas. So there are two ring of nodes around the pancreas. The first ring of nodes is more like the primary drainage. And from these nodes, the lymphatic drainage goes towards the axial or the central nodes of the pancreatic drainage system. So along the vessels, gastroduodenal nodes and the anterior and posterior pancreaticoduodenal nodes, these are basically the nodes along the gastroduodenal vessels and the PDA. You have the supra and the infrapancreatic nodes which will be respectively along the upper and lower border of the pancreas. You have the mesentric nodes along the mesentric vessels and the splenic and gastrosplenic nodes. So lymphatic drainage of pancreas, this is the first ring of nodes, the nodes that will drain the lymph from the pancreas. From these structures, the lymphatic drainage will continue towards the chain. And in these deeper chains, you will have the splenic artery nodes, you will have the left gastric nodes, the celiac nodes, which also receives drainage from gastroduodenal and hepatic nodes. So this is one area where pancreas is going to drain finally into the celiac nodes. The lower part of pancreas or the infrapancreatic group will drain into the superior mesentric nodes. If you have not identified the structures, superior mesentric artery, inferior pancreaticoduodenal artery, middle colic artery and vein and the renal artery. So the upper border of pancreas, the celiac group of nodes, that is how the lymphatic drainage will go from the previous ring to this ring and finally to the celiac or the common hepatic nodes. And for the lower border of pancreas, the infrapancreatic group, it can drain into the superior mesentric nodes through different lymphatic channels. Coming to the AJCC 8th edition for staging of cancers involving the pancreas, we know that the tumor staging is now simplified. The N1 and N2 is different between previous staging and this staging. It is simply based on the number of nodes. And unlike colon, where node positive disease is stage 3, here node positive disease starts from stage 2B. Okay, T4 is stage 3 and 2 is stage 3. So 1, 2, 3 nodes is N1, 4 or more nodes is N2. Coming to some important concept, we have to understand that there is no communication in the lymphatics between the greater and the lesser gastric curvature, but there is definitely a communication between pancreatic and duodenal lymphatics. When we see the minimum number of nodes to be dissected, the average is 12, but between the American pathologies vis-a-vis -vis the NCCN 2025, the minimum number of nodes ranges from 11 to 17. So at least 11 nodes need to be resected in a PD. We know that there are three types of lymphadenectomies when it comes to pancreatic or duodenectomy. There is a standard radical and an extended radical PD. Whereas when it comes to distal pancreatectomy, there is a standard and radical. So for the two slides that we saw previously, in standard surgeries, the first ring of nodes are adequate, whereas in the radical and extended radical have not shown survival benefits so far. So we prefer standard PD and DP when it comes to Whipple's procedure or a distal pancreatectomy. So these are the numbers of the lymph node stations. I am sure most of you would know these are the lymph node stations commonly asked in exams as well. So when we discuss standard pancreatic duodenectomy, we are rejecting these lymph node stations for the head and neck or the Whipple procedure. When it comes to distal pancreatectomy, we are basically discussing the removal of the splenic hilum nodes and the 
inferior border of pancreas lymph node. So that is station 10, 11, and 18. 5, 6 is supra and infra pylori. 13 is retropancreatic, whereas 17 is anterior pancreatic. So you will have to revise these lymph node stations many times. But once you start doing these surgeries and you start dissecting these areas, the numbers will become very easy to remember. We are not going into discussion of radical and extended radical because it is not the standard of care currently. A standard lymphadenectomy is the current recommended surgery when it comes to Whipple's procedure or a distal pancreatectomy. Now coming to nerve supply, a very simplified topic. Preganglionic nerves come from the celiac division of the posterior vagal trunk. Ganglias are within the pancreas and postganglionic fibers terminate at the pancreatic islet cells. The efferent from these is vasomotor. Sympathetic supply preganglionic comes from the splanchnic nerves, which is T5 to T10, T9 to T11, the greater and the lesser splanchnic nerves, two celiac and superior mesenteric artery ganglia, and the postganglionic nerve fibers reach pancreas by periarterial plexuses. We have seen these plexuses in some complex diagrams. We will see it in the next slide. Sympathetic, the efferent is pain and efferent is vasomotor. So as we all know, the sympathetic have long postganglionic nerve fibers. So the ganglia don't form in the organ, whereas the parasympathetic has short postganglionic fibers and therefore the ganglia are within the organ. If you are having doubts regarding sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system, we have a separate video on it in our anesthesia section. So these are some of the plexuses that you can see around the pancreas. PLPH1 is a pancreatic head plexus one which usually supplies drain the nose to the pancreatic head. PLPH2 and uncinate predominantly supply to the pancreatic uncinate process. PLSMA is the plexus around the superior mesenteric artery and CE is the plexus around the celiac axis. You can also have a PLCHA which is to the common hepatic artery. All these plexuses are important to remember when you are doing surgery for this part of the pancreas. Hackert has described a surgery known as triangle operation where you will be removing this part of the structure, the triangle is based between the celiac axis. One of its surface is SMA, one is the CHA, and one border is formed by the portal vein. So essentially, this area with a lot of nerves gets removed in this Hackert surgery known as triangle operation. Imaging, we are not going to discuss in detail because we have a lot of videos on pancreas. So we have finished anatomy, embryology, and now Imaging, we have already discussed what is a pancreas protocol, multiple cases in the Corelay clinically series. We have discussed acute and chronic pancreatitis in imaging, excellent dedicated lectures by our radiologists. You have imaging in pancreatic cancer, which is already discussed. So that completes our series on pancreatic anatomy from basic to applied. Thank you.